Hi there. Welcome to the Trauma Plicity Talk Show. My name is Dr. Amanda Hellman, your host, and we have Trauma Plicity, trauma being, being one word, plus the simplicity, which means simplicity in the trauma process. Not saying that trauma is not complex or that it doesn't take a process, but it's helping our brain to really simplify how we think about it so that we get started. Trauma Plicity Talk Show is available on the Amanda Hellman Author and Speaker Show and also podcasts, also YouTube. So, so glad that you are all here and please add any of your comments, questions as we go. Typically we have our show 7 p.m. on Wednesdays and I'm really delighted today I have Henry Harris who is author of Facing Our Wounds. And he is on to talk about part of his trauma story. And Henry, I'm just really delighted to have you on and would love to just know more about your journey and anything else you'd like to share with the audience about how to get in touch with you or other things that you're doing. Uh, Amanda, thank you so much for this opportunity to be with you. Uh, I appreciate you, your friendship and you're such a beautiful person, uh, internally and externally. So I'm so honored to be here with you tonight uh, to talk about my book, Facing Our Wounds. Uh, my wounds go all the way back to my childhood uh, from a variety of things that I go into detail about uh, in my book that has themed into my adulthood. And I think for a lot of people, when you don't address those things that you have went through in your childhood, they can affect your adulthood. Uh, it's almost like being an adult, but still being having to deal with your childhood. So uh, that's everything from like religious trauma. I feel like I went through that uh, quite a bit. Uh, feel like I've been through, you know, just a variety of uh, major things that many people may be familiar with and, and has went through it. Sometimes throughout life, we feel like if I just suppress that, pretend like it didn't happen, I always feel like it would get better when in reality it never did. Yeah, and that's a lot that you brought up about religious trauma, childhood trauma, um, and different areas, um, Henry. And I know that you wrote The Facing Our Wounds, out of your healing journey. Mm -hmm. Is there something in particular that caused you to write that book? Yeah. Um, I, like I said, a variety of things like being bullied, uh, just a variety of things that you deal with, uh, you know, what people deal with in general. Uh, I feel like the essence of the book just helps people to reach a place of uh, transparency and authenticity and mm -hmm. but at the same time being able to deal with you yourself you know mm -hmm. i told somebody the other day i said i didn't just wake up and say you know i want to write a book about trauma or about pain mm -hmm. i said how effective would that be for people who've never experienced it mm -hmm. while all wanted to talk about it i feel like that's not effective at all i feel like i've been through enough divorce you know, just a variety of things I've been through uh, in my life that all of us can relate to. Everybody's wounds uh, are different. Uh, I'm sure you've been through some things too, Amanda. Your wounds may be different than my wounds, but mm -hmm. your, your wounds may be bigger than mine. Mine may be bigger than yours, but I'll never minimize uh, or, or downplay your trauma and your wounds just because mm -hmm. it's different. The reality of it is at the end of the day, there are still wounds and they still need to be dealt with. And that's why it's important mm -hmm. to face those wounds. And as I said on TV interview here recently, um, when your wounds finally come up to the surface, I don't know if you've ever been to a lake or an ocean or something, you see the water coming on the surface, it hits your feet and, you, and you, that feeling comes like, oh, it's finally there. It's about, and you see the water approaching your feet it's the same way with trauma. Like you can hide mm -hmm. it for so long. It's out there in the ocean, but now you see it finally coming up and you, you can't just ignore it anymore. You have to face it. You have to deal with the, 
the man or the woman that's in the mirror. That's a subtitle of the book, um, looking into the mirror of my heart. And um, when you look in the mirror, you don't see a reflection of anyone else. You see a reflection of you, which mm -hmm. means at the end of the day, I have to deal with my own struggles, my own pain. And that's hard to do because to face our wounds simply means in so many ways you have to, it, it kind of takes you back. We don't want to go back. I, don't, I didn't want to, I don't want to deal yeah. with it. I just didn't. And I think that's why this book kind of went viral and it's kind of, it's all over, like different countries are ordered. Mm -hmm. I think almost every state in the United States of different mm -hmm. people all over. Because I think the book has a universal language. Mm -hmm. uh, while everybody experienced loss and sadness and pain and heartache and uh, trauma. We all have experienced it, but to actually face it, I think we need to give ourselves some credit. And um, so I think that's what's important uh, in facing our wounds. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, and I think, mm -hmm. you know, I asked that because I know you shared about the different traumas, but sometimes there's one thing that leads us to it. Like, as you mentioned, it's not like I woke up one day to say, yeah, I'm going to write a book about my trauma. It takes some time after you face your own wounds. And as you mentioned, it is universal. All of us are human. We all have some type of wounds or some type of sadness or loss, as you mentioned. And so it's relatable for different people. And it's amazing that it's around the United States and around the nations to really help people have a resource and be able to relate, as you mentioned. So thank you for sharing that book. And I'll have you at the end also put that up one more time so we can, the audience can, can see that. Um, so going into the next part is what were three or five or just some simple steps, if you have three or five, great, but some simple steps for our audience to navigate some traumas they're going through. Uh, I like to use that word navigate because that's the main thing about the book. It not only helps people to navigate through their pain, but to reach a destination of wholeness and healing. Mm -hmm. Some people just get, some people have just given up all to yell. Mm -hmm. they've, they've accepted that trauma and that pain as the norm and that will ever change but this book kind of opposes that that there is change I'm optimistic that there is change and there is help for anyone sometimes there's not always good help out mm -hmm. there um, I feel like when it comes to strategies and different things that helps people to get to where they're at if you read the book, I'm not one of those people that say, this is what works for me. And if you don't do it this way, you won't be healed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't do that. So mm -hmm. when you ask that question about that, uh, all I can say is I can come from the perspective of what works for me. Yep. Uh, and all I can say is that my faith in God and uh, Jesus Christ is what healed a lot of my internal, emotional, deep wounds. And uh, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that so many wounds have layers. Mm -hmm. My friend, William Paul Young, the author of The Shack, he always, we had a conversation when I was writing my book. He said, Henry, also healing comes in layers. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, I didn't know that. That is so profound. So uh, to answer your question, I would say for me, my faith in God, you know, helped me out. Uh, people did. Uh, I would say seeing therapists was a great help. Uh, that was a great help. And also overall, uh, ultimately acknowledging it. Mm -hmm. That's the hard part. That's the hard yeah. part. That's mm -hmm. actually where, like the first chapter of my book is called um, uh, Acknowledging My Wounds. That's the hardest, that was the hardest mm -hmm. part for me because mm -hmm. I spent so many years suppressing it. And like I said, in denial, I think chapter, one of the chapters talks about the state of denial. Mm -hmm. It's easier to just forget about it, pretend like it didn't happen, but realistically, you know it did. So you just, it's just making you feel more depressed. And it's just such a liberation that comes with just acknowledging it and just dealing mm -hmm. with it. And I feel like healing is a never ending journey. I don't feel like healing comes to a final destination. Because, and I say that because just when you get over something or let's say you get healed from something, there is something else that needs to be addressed. 
So I think as long as you're on this earth or, or this planet, there's going to always be uh, this progress. Healing is pain is progressive that it always comes, you know, but also healing is progressive too. I love so that you said that healing, yeah. Okay. That's kind of what works for me. And um, I'm very respectful as to what worked for somebody else. But the reality of it is that at least you're getting the help that you need and you're telling yourself, I need help. Uh, that's, that's a huge start to your uh, healing journey. Yeah, thank you, Henry. And I love that you said healing is on, is a, it is, it's an ongoing process. And I always use the visual that healing is like unpeeling an onion. It's one layer by layer. And it is ongoing. So I usually used to say, well, I'm good with that. And now I just say, there may be more. <laughs> and so there's, as you said, you're going deeper, deep falls deep. Um, and so there's that deeper layer. And I love how you shared your tools because that's what I love about the show is every week we have a new person on who shares how they went through it. And so if you're in the audience, you may relate to Henry's story or perhaps some of the tools he has and you pick them up. We pick them up every week to see. And a lot of them are some similar ones. Like uh, some people have, have shared faith and Henry, you did about your faith. You shared about support of others, which we I've heard that's been a huge theme support of other people who are supportive during the healing process and facing them, which I think is a hard, a hard part, even as a human to really own what happened, even when it, it wasn't that we, and we deserved it, right? It's always, trauma is hard like that. Cause sometimes there's things that we respond to out of it, but being able to say, let me face this, which is scary to face the pain and go through it, but so worth it as you had shared. And also the help of other therapy, other therapists, that is key. And I've heard that before. And again, there might be different things that other people do, but I think, um, as you mentioned, this is helpful for people to know that it's possible. Yeah, I like so, how you use the word own. Uh, mm -hmm. That is very powerful because at the end of the day, that's what, that's what it is. When you own your own story, you can tell it the way you want to tell it. You, you have the right, so to speak, Mm -hmm. uh, not only have I been through this, but I have the right to talk about it. I've owned it. You don't have to worry about being exposed mm -hmm. because you've already exposed yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, that word ownership is very important too. Like I own this. Um, this is what uh, I've dealt with and this is how mm -hmm. I'm going to go about being uh, healed. Yeah, that's great. And especially I think with you talking about vulnerability comes when we share our story there might be shame we have during it but when we're ready to launch it not having shame and I think that's a huge part is saying yeah these are the hardest parts of me <laughs> like this is me um, and this is where I was but not having shame knowing that you know thank goodness that there's a shift and that it can help other people who were there and not forgetting that part of the story because that will help other people know that there's hope that there's hope from going from one place to another great so thank you uh henry and i just wanted to see do you have any other encouraging words to the audience uh, I know your book is intended for women and men, but it's so great to have, I've been having more men on my show. And a lot of times men and men, men don't always seek mental health just due to different societal barriers. And um, so do you have any words for the men that may be watching this show in terms of mental health? I believe men, um, I'm trying to see how I can word it. I believe men are like in caves, like so to speak. Uh, women are more uh, open, I believe. And I'm a huge advocate for women and, and abuse. And we talk about this stuff on my show, the mm -hmm. Broadway Institute show. But I believe men sometimes are in caves in the sense like, this is my world. And, they, and most men know they have some issues, some internal damage which can affect relationships too if they don't mm -hmm. get that taken care of. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of many reasons why I've never been abusive in any way, but I think that's one of the many reasons why many men have a lot of anger and resentment. A lot of that stuff goes back to our childhood. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying everything mm -hmm. does, but, but they build this facade, this cave, this, my, this like being in our own little bubble, Nobody's getting in it. 
And it's like, I think we have to reach a point, uh, if this is for me specifically, where uh, you have to allow somebody into that your world <laughs> um, and not uh, put yourself in a position of bondage like that. Because I know there are a lot of stereotypes. Men don't cry. I guess I'm not a real man because I cry maybe every only day. <laughs> I can watch a TV show and cry. Um, you know, men are tough. That's another one. There's just a lot of stereotypes that just need yeah. to be broken. And mm -hmm. I think it's one of the main reasons why a lot of men don't open up about their trauma and pain is because of the facade that they've built around themselves that they're okay when in reality uh, you're really not. And it takes a really strong, brilliant, uh, confident man to say, at least to some women, they would like to see uh, or find it attractive that a man can finally admit, not just mm -hmm. say he's sorry, but actually admit, this is what I'm sorry about, and not using the word if. Mm -hmm. Many times, if you say, well, um, I'm sorry if I've done something wrong with you, something wrong to you, when in reality, you know you did. It's kind of manipulating the situation or making making her question her sanity. And I speak from experience. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, I've not been abusive or nothing like that, but at the same time, I haven't always been truthful either. That's facing your wounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's confession, which mm -hmm. simply means mm -hmm. I tell the truth. Mm -hmm. It may hurt to hear the truth, but at least at the end of the day, you say you told the truth. So I think for a lot of men, Allow somebody into that cave with you, or the, I mentioned my friend William Paul Young, or the shack, or into into your shack, into your world, and uh, I think you'll feel a whole lot better about yourself. And I'm speaking from perspective uh, as a man, so um, it's real hard to get through to men sometimes. But uh, the question <clears throat> is why. Yeah, that's great. And thank you for sharing that and encouraging men if you're watching and perhaps even women who are watching and you know how and um, just looking at saying it's okay. And I think, Henry, to cry is a strength. I think in society we have shared that it's not to be strong, to not cry. And that's not true. I think for men and women to know it's okay to cry, it's okay to be vulnerable. So thank you for sharing that and encouraging men. And so our just any other final encouraging word you have for any everyone out there if they're starting their journey or on the journey of facing their wounds? I would say, um, my last words, I would say to give yourself uh, the grace to heal. I believe that healing takes time. So we should give ourselves the grace to heal. Sometimes when people are going through their healing process, they try to rush it when they need to give themselves the grace uh, to heal. Healing is a day by day thing. Uh, like when you go through different wounds and things in your life, uh, or they just use the analogy of like a physical wound. Um, it's not gonna heal overnight. I don't know if any doctor that does a surgery on someone and say, you're going to be better by tomorrow. I mean, that's just not realistic. It takes time. I feel like the encouragement, I would say, in close, give yourself the grace to heal. Um, I think that's what's important. And also, uh, one of the chapters talks about creating a safe place for the wounded. I mm -hmm. feel like that's important, too. You want to connect with people who you can be 100% transparent with, but also at the same time being careful who you who you open up to. Make sure they're not only a safe place, but a safe space yeah. for you to share anything with without fear of judgment and retaliation. That's really good. Just making sure you have a safe person. And I think also, you know, when we're in a different journey, I know in my um you know, my own personal story, you shared yours, there were times that I was learning. So a lot of my book was things that I 
was messing up on or learning, you know, especially even, and, and so I'm sure you can relate, but being kind to themselves and having people that can relate that you're on a journey, like you said, a safe, safe space. So that's important, whether it's our, you know, whatever our journey is having people who can, they may not be able to, some people are not ready for that, but having the ones that are. So thank you for that. So that is our Trump Plisity talk show for this week. Henry, it's been a pleasure to have you on. Uh, audience, if you uh, certainly can pick up his book, you see it in the background. And Henry, if you're willing to share it again, the Facing Your Wounds book, mm -hmm. and that's available on Amazon? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so certainly you want to get yourself a copy. And if you have any other questions for Henry, please write it after our show. And I'll certainly get that back to Henry and uh, we'll, we'll connect again. As always, it's great to have all of you on here. It's great to have you, Henry. You all matter, you're worthy. And continue to just take one simple step, one simple celebration at a time to, to continue your healing journey. Uh, and we'll see you back here next week, every Wednesday, 7 p.m. on the Amanda Hellman Author and Speaker Show, as well as podcasts and YouTube. So take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you. You're so welcome. <laughs>